Hi, I'm Rana Morgan, and I'm here at the Sleep Center, and we're visiting with Dr. Hajal. Dr. Hajal, there are several sleep disorders that affect people. Could we talk about those, like one of them is narcolepsy? I don't understand what narcolepsy is. Narcolepsy is a neurological disease, which means it's a brain malfunction. Mm -hmm. What happens is that there is a, uh, the centers of the brain that usually orchestrate the sleep mm -hmm. are, are not functioning very well. So there is no cyclical change. So we don't go into sleep and then we would wake up. What happens is that the sleep can intrude at any part of, of the wakefulness. So they don't have a normal sleep cycle. That's true, because the, the uh, center in the brain that orchestrates all of this is not there. So, uh, so there's a little bit of free-flowing. In addition, when they do fall asleep, they don't sleep heavy either, and oh. they don't get restful sleep uh, because of the narcolepsy. And now it's been linked to one specific hormone in the brain called hypocretin, uh, that was diagnosed around 2000 or 2001, that this is the hormone that is lacking, uh, which orchestrates the sleep in, uh, in our brains. So the symptoms would be falling asleep in the middle of the day? There are, the symptoms of narcolepsy is, are quite typical, mainly falling asleep throughout the, the day, which is the number one complaint that people show up to. And it, there's a misconception out there that it has to be a sleep attack, which means you're doing anything that you want and all of a mm -hmm. sudden you feel that you have to sleep which is, could be true, but most of the time this, those people cannot function. They get up in the morning not feeling well, and throughout the day they feel sleepiness. So that's a number one symptom. Mm -hmm. number, another symptom is called cat cataplexy, which means uh, when, when they're doing something and they feel a little bit emotional about uh, what they're doing, or laughter sometimes mm -hmm. tells them a joke, they feel like they're going to fall to the ground, their knees buckle, and they could fall to the ground. And this is without falling asleep, just muscle weakness. So they just go lax. Exactly. With and then laughter or tears? With laughter or any emotions. And you can imagine that if this starts in childhood, it's so hard to, to tell why the child would actually fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. And when they do grow up and they're 21 and showing up in our office, sometimes to complain about it, they have had those symptoms since they were children. So they don't even know what is normal, what is not anymore. So that's one. Another one that's very common is sleep paralysis, which means they would wake up mm -hmm. and not being able to move at all. They're completely frozen. And they cannot move their muscles even though they are awake. They frequently can move their eyes and look around the room. And this could last for just two or three minutes, but to the person going through it, it could seem an eternity. But that would be terrifying. It, it would be very terrifying. And this frequently is the reason why they would show up sometimes. Now, you said that children get narcolepsy. Is right. that typical? It is typical because we think that at some point in, in childhood they would lose the center. And, uh, and frequently the, when they we would diagnose lose the center? The center that orchestrates okay, uh, the right. sleep. And frequently when we see people and we start asking them, they can trace it back to when they were wow. teens. They say, yeah, I was showing some signs there, but it may not mature. It will become a full picture of narcolepsy, usually in their uh, uh, 20s. puberty? Does it hit I think puberty? around puberty is when the symptoms show up, yeah. Okay, and so a lot of times they don't know that that's what's affecting them. No, and you know, I feel very good when I diagnose somebody very early because sometimes their schooling could be affected. So you have somebody who's labeled to be lazy by their uh, teacher, and then what they have is actually narcolepsy. And uh, it's very nice uh, fulfilling to diagnose somebody who's 16 and you can alter their schooling and their whole life when we diagnose them early as opposed to diagnosing somebody who's uh, 55 or something. So a child might be labeled as lazy, but that, they wouldn't be manifesting the most dramatic symptoms of it, right? That's true, which makes it harder. So the first symptoms would be sleepiness, which mm -hmm. could be, you know, labeled as lazy. But, but you could have other sleep disorders, and this is what we should caution the teachers about that, about if somebody is not really participating in class, falling asleep, there could be other reasons. There could be social reasons, but also medical reasons for them to behave like that. And it can also be very dramatic, like I had a friend who had it and she fell asleep driving her car in the middle of the day oh, yes. and hit a parked car. And, and this is terrible. There's so many people who, who, um, uh, who get into car accidents from narcolepsy and that's the problem is that they are undiagnosed. They never really showed up mm. to, uh, to get that worked up. And unfortunately, that's, the, that's how they show up after a car accident. And the highway patrolman makes them come in to, to get the work up. Thank you very much for that explanation. Thank you.